control. This is a brief video just to show uh, to show you guys how to do preventive maintenance on GE 752 and other DC motors. This is where we're going to begin. Safety is is going to be the first the first thing you got to worry about whenever you're working on any electrical device. Most of the GE 752s and DC motors have what have uh, what's called a lockout device. It's this switch that locks out the power from the motor. So anytime you get ready to work on the motor, before you open up the box, make sure the motor is not running and engage your lockout device to stop power from feeding into the motor. If your motor does not have a lockout device, then uh, get, get with the controller and see if you can lock out the controller to prevent any electrical shock. All right, these are your standard GE 752 or other DC motor carbon brushes. This is a new brush. It's got the tin shunt. But what I want you to, to notice that it's got lines on it. These lines are called wear lines. These lines are there for a reason. Okay, back to the wear lines. Not only do you have your part number, but you've got your wear lines. This area here on the brush holders is the viewing window. Once your brush is engaged, it'll slide up and down in the box as shown. Once the brush starts wearing, you notice that the lines start showing at the bottom of the viewing box. That's your first line that tells you, okay, it's time to start considering changing brushes. As you hit the second line, now you've, you've really got to speed up the process on when you're going to change brushes. If you get to the third line, that's usually too late because what will happen is the brush spring arm will run out of tension and your brush will start shorting out. Okay, as I was mentioning, once the brush gets too short, it starts losing contact with the, with the commutator, your brush spring bottoms out, and the arcing and sparking begin. At that point, you're, you're starting to damage not only the brush holders, but you start damaging the commutator and start burning up the, the armature. You can see these brushes were allowed to get way too short. And this in turn shorted out the motor and they lost the armature. Okay, this is the result of your brushes running too short. This armature is now bad. It has completely burned up all the insulation underneath the commutator and it's beyond repair. At this point, this client will require a replacement armature and this damage was all due to the lack of uh, maintenance, changing out the brushes accordingly. All right guys, this particular example is your typical example of a motor that doesn't see a lot of activity. You can see that the brushes are seized and especially you can see that the holders are, the, the brush spring tension is gone. They're frozen solid. So when you see a brush holder like this and you think that the brushes still have plenty of life left, don't be fooled. If you're gonna change out one brush, you're gonna change out all the brushes in the motor. By changing out all the brushes, you can catch stuff like this, frozen holders, and, uh, and, and possibly brushes that are seized in the box. So it's always a, a good plan to change out all the brushes in the motor all at the same time and verify that your brush holder arms are not stuck. Another thing to keep in mind is you see these Teflon insulators? Anytime you change out brushes, take the time to wipe off the Teflon insulators. This is your only, uh, your only point of going to ground in the brush holder. So by taking off all the carbon, that helps extend the life of the, of the brush and the brush holder overall. Now, here at Global Tech, we promote the constant tension brush holders. This is a constant tension brush holder. This is not a constant tension brush holder. These tend to seize. They seize over time and they'll freeze up, as you can see. I just shifted it and it's stuck. These on the other hand are constant tension. The brush is always under tension. 
these holders do not seize or freeze over time. So anytime you have the opportunity of servicing a motor, it would be good to, to move up to this type of design because it'll help you, especially with motors that don't see as much activity as other motors, something like a, uh, a rotary table motor. And, and again, the Teflon insulators must remain this clean. Is a remanufactured motor. As you can see, the commutator has been resurfaced. Everything's been done. It's got the new holders and it's got the, the new carbon brushes. You always want to try to maintain a one eighth gap between the commutator and the brush holder. Maximum one eighth, minimum one sixteenth of an inch. That keeps the brushes from chattering and chipping and breaking over time. All right guys, this is what you consider a resurfacing stone. It's a handheld resurfacing stone. Once the brushes have been changed out, if you have the opportunity, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and power up the motor and then you want to carefully roll that motor at approximately two to 300 RPM. This is a wooden handle. So this, this will prevent any type of electrical shock. You want to carefully place this against the commutator in a sweeping motion to take any of the rough spots and high spots off the commutator. Again, it's called a resurfacing stone. If you don't have some of these, you might want to look into getting some and keeping them in stock. What this does, this smooths out the running surface of the commutator. So if the commutator has been arcing and sparking, it doesn't eat up your new brushes. Okay, in closing, if you have clean air source available, it would also help out while you're slow rolling and seating your brushes in, if you can get an air nozzle with an insulated tube. That way you can reach into the motor and blow it out and blow all the carbon out from between the mica segments on your commutator. This will also help cut down the arcing and sparking and it's what you call air curing a commutator. Again, it must be a clean air source because the last thing you want to do is blow oil all over your commutator because that's going to be a problem. That's a basic for just doing uh, preventive maintenance because that's basically all you can do to the motors is try to keep the commutator chamber clean and carbon free. Um, if you've got any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, Fernando at GlobalTechMotors.com and I'll be more than glad to work with you or provide you a price on replacement parts and accessories. Thank you very much for your time.